Well, hello there, folks. Okay, a few further thoughts on uh, old Michael Parkinson, who sadly is no longer with us. Obviously, as you many of you will know, he's died over the last couple of days. And before I start, I feel a little bit bad about a little bit that I'm going to do here, because it might cause upset amongst the few that are going to watch it. But it's always been my aim when I started this channel to tell the truth and tell things as I see them. I've seen something over the last couple of days that I thought I'd mention, and I'm probably wrong about. So if I'm wrong about, then I do apologise. So I'm putting that apology out there first. But I'm still going to say it because it's something I noticed and I thought it was strange. Before that, let me just say I seen something with Parky last night on the old YouTube. It was a 20 minute piece. He was interviewed by a young lady. It looked like it was in his back garden. And a substantial back garden it was too. Um, and they were talking about Alan Wicker. And Alan Wicker's um, place in Parky's life. And now Alan Wicker was a great mentor for Parky. I never knew that. It was fascinating, it was fantastic. It was only probably 19 to 22 minutes long. Watched it all, thought it was great. Seemingly, he really, really, really looked up to Wicker. And I never knew that, but I liked Alan Wicker as well, so it was nice to watch. If you get the chance to watch it, watch it, I think it's pretty good. Now the bit that, I'm a bit concerned about saying this, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. Um, I heard on the radio yesterday on radio, on TalkSport, I missed the interview. They did a little interview with Dickie Bird after Michael had died with his thoughts and many of you will know Dickie was probably his greatest friend in life if not definitely one of his greatest friends and Dickie has been very upset because obviously he was very close to uh, Mr Parkinson and Dickie spoke to him the day before Michael died they said the goodbyes on the, over the phone Dickie said he knew he was frail he could tell by his voice but he hoped he would fight on and still be with us Dickie's suffering a great loss there and my heart goes out to him I missed the interview on TalkSport and they said he got very emotional anyway I uh, downloaded out whatever you do and played it later on in the day, last night, and I listened and he was in a bad way and I felt really, really, really sorry for him. But he'd also been on, I think it was the Jeremy Vine show in the morning, and I actually also watched that, I think it was the Jeremy Vine show, I'm pretty sure it was, in the morning, and um, did I watch that? I think I watched that on YouTube. Uh, and he'd also done something on Sky News, um, Dickie it. Because obviously everybody wanted to speak to him yesterday with Parky dying because he was probably his best friend and the closest person to him they could get to speak to because obviously they had no access to Parky's wife and, and son at the time so they went for the next best thing and that would be Dickie and Dickie gave a good few interviews which is fine I've got no uh, no issue with that at all but he's been interviewed on Sky in fact I've seen it on the internet but it has been on Sky and it was only about a 30 or 40 second clip on the internet last night on the MSN and it's weird, old Dickie, Dickie's talking about him. And all of a sudden, he's just talking like I am now. And, oh, but I'm really sad. I'm really, really, really sad I am. And, uh, yeah, and I'm missing him. I'm really, really missing him. And it was strange because he went into, from no shaky voice, no nothing, into uh, crying. Talking like normally, then crying. Straight out of it, talking normally. Couldn't see a tear in sight. Now, maybe some people don't tear up. I do believe that. I have heard that. And I thought... That looks strange. It almost looked like it was false, fake crying. I thought, no, I'm, you must be wrong. You must be wrong, Dave. You can, that can't be right. There's no need to do that. Anyway, that's what I thought to myself. I thought, no, no. And I thought I was going to mention it on there. I thought, no, no, I won't bother. Anyways, I've seen Dickie today on, um, what was it? On the BBC did a big thing on, on Parky this morning on the um, the breakfast show, six till nine. I can't think what the show's called. Is it? It's not Good Morning Britain. That's the other one. Can't think what the BBC one is, but the... They, they did about three spots on Parkinson and they were all really good. And one of them had old Dickie in the studio, probably about seven, half past seven, I think it was. And it was weird they talked to him and he's got a longish interview here. And he did exactly the same again. He's just talking away, talking away, talking away. And all of a sudden, bam, very emotional. I'm getting very emotional. He's really getting to me. And then she's all naggers, pat him, saying, oh, don't worry, Dickie, take a drink of water or whatever. But then he came straight back out of it again and I thought... I'm not saying he's putting it on as for the wrong reasons, but I thought, is he putting that on because he wants people to know how much he cared about Parky and how much he feels the loss or whatever else? And I thought that was the case, and I really, really did. And I thought, it was strange again, not a tear in sight, but he went from, obviously he's upset, but he went from talking almost to breaking down like that and then coming out of it like that. And again, it only lasted 10 or 12 seconds. And I thought, that's very strange, is that? Normally when you break down, you can't be consoled for a few minutes, you know, you, you, you lose it. 
and it was just really really weird mind you I, th I thought what was weird as well I mean he'd said just today in an interview him and uh, Parky have known each other for 84 years then today in an interview he said 75 and then after that so he said somebody's worked it out and it's 76 years but Dickie himself's 90 and I'm thinking is he losing it a bit he also said today on the the breakfast show there on BBC he said I'll tell you what he always had one regret did Michael there's always one guest he wanted and he could never get and he told me in confidence once he told me he said he did everything to get him now I thought it was going to be Frank Sinatra because I read just today he always wanted Sinatra and couldn't get him he said no he said that big movie star that big movie star and is it Charlie Syatt said John Wayne and someone said no they've had him and he mentioned a couple of names he said that's it Eastwood Clint Eastwood he always wanted Clint Eastwood tried everything to get him and couldn't get him even Mary Mary tried in her position to get him everybody tried they couldn't get him it was the great regret of his life and I thought I'm sure he interviewed Eastwood I'm sure I've seen it on the internet so I went on the internet later he interviewed him in 2003 and I thought Dickie what are you on about you got him 20 years ago man so maybe Dickie's having some issues now I don't know but the crying bits I thought was really strange on TalkSport you could tell he'd broken down even though it's only on radio you could tell and that it was inconsolable for her. that was that was legit but the one on Sky News and the one today on BBC I, I I don't know, I, th I think it's as though he wants people to know how upset he is and how much he meant to him. And he's thinking, by doing that, he's portraying that. You know, I don't think he's doing it for sympathy for himself. I don't think he's thinking of himself. But I think he wants people to really know how much Parky meant to him and whatever. And I don't know, they just seem like, dare I say, crocodile tears. And it's an awful thing to say. I wish I'd have just left it out and just done the bit about... Who did I mention at the start? I can't think who it was. Alan Wicker, that's who I mentioned. Anyway, my thoughts, and might upset a few people, I don't mean to, but watch it, see what you think, viewers. Anybody that watches this video, even if you think I'm being a bit harsh and a bit awful, just watch the clips on the Sky News and then Breakfast This Morning. You might have to download it if you've not taped it and see what you think. I, I'd be surprised if anyone can disagree with me if you watch it. You'll disagree if you don't watch it, but if you watch it, I think you'll struggle to disagree. I, I really, really do. Sorry, I've rambled on a long time.